about the meeting. No kidding. I can't believe she said that to you. <laughs> bad meetings lead to bad boards, which lead to bad decisions, which hurt associations. Bad meetings raise frustration levels, lead to mistrust by the owners, waste everyone's time, and makes it hard to find people to serve on the board. This tape will try to help you change that. We're going to look at the two basic meetings that most associations have, the board meeting and the general membership meeting. We'll show you proven techniques for holding shorter, more effective meetings. Along the way, we'll visit Robert's Rules of Order, how to deal with problem people at meetings, and provide a number of tips that may help you with the problem you're having at your association. This isn't working, is it? No. No, it's not working. This is, uh, this is the kind of board meeting that I absolutely hate. Meeting in someone's living room is just way too informal. I mean, we chit-chat about things instead of getting down to business. I mean, the kids, the TV, the phone, constant interruptions. It's, it just takes twice as long to do the meeting, if we ever get to the meeting, than it should take. And it just never feels like business. I think we should do this again only the right way this time. Good meetings don't just happen, they're planned. You want to hold a meeting in a more formal setting than someone's living room. Now we have a clubhouse where we can meet. If you don't have a clubhouse, try to hold the meeting where you can have a more business-like atmosphere. Often nearby schools, civic centers, or libraries will have meeting rooms available. Or you could meet at one of the board members' offices. Or if you have a management company, you could meet at their office. If you have to meet at someone's home, use the dining room table. Or bring a large folding table to at least give the appearance of a board meeting. A board table means business. The time of the meeting is also important. Now that's right, you, you should seriously look at times other than early evening to hold the meeting. I know after eight or nine hours at work, I'm tired and really don't want to have to make any more decisions. You're right. I know I'd rather be unwinding at home than dealing with any more problems. If you have a manager, consider holding meetings during business hours or just at the end of the business day. When you meet later in the evening, you're paying for the time and expense of that manager's stay past business hours. Also, the later you hold the meeting, the more tired your members will be which just makes it harder to run a smooth, effective meeting. Meetings should be held in a business-like setting. Try to hold meetings at times other than evenings. Meet after you have the monthly reports you need to make decisions. Our board meetings are open for all owners to attend. We have an open forum where they can ask questions or make comments about association matters. The forum is held just before the board meeting. Tony, our president, opens the forum and lays out the ground rules before every meeting. We allow about 15 minutes for our forum. But that can be adjusted depending on how many people we expect to have speak. Welcome to the Owners Forum. Now, this is your opportunity to ask questions of the board or make comments about association matters. Let me explain how this works. One person at a time can have the floor to talk. I'll recognize you first. You'll all get a chance to talk. While the person has the floor, we would appreciate it if the other people wouldn't comment or interrupt. Please address your comments to the board, not at individuals. I will not tolerate personal attacks directed at anyone. Please keep it calm and to the point. You'll have three minutes to talk. After that, I'll move on to the next person. After everyone has had a chance to speak, you'll have a second opportunity if you didn't finish the first time. At the end of the forum, we'll begin the board meeting. You're welcome to stay, but you will not be able to take part. All right, who has something to say? At any meeting, it's important for everyone attending to understand the ground rules. This will often diffuse some emotional moments by adding a layer of structure to the process. You need to make sure it's handled fairly and calmly. While our president did not say that Robert's rules would be used, he did outline a few of them in an informal way. For small gatherings, this is appropriate. Also, he invited people to stay and observe. Many states have sunshine laws which require that meetings be open to the members. 
check with your attorney as to whether or not this is a requirement in your state and under what conditions you may close meetings. Thank you for your questions and comments. You're welcome to stay during the board meeting. This meeting is called to order. You all received the agenda and board package earlier, so you've had an opportunity to review the materials. Anyone who did not receive the package or go over it? The secretary is still in the hospital, by the way, and he won't be in attendance. Here again, understanding the ground rules is important. That's my job. As the presiding officer, I control the meeting. Our bylaws require us to use Robert's rules of order for our meeting's procedure. But for small meetings, like our board meeting, they're less formal. The ground rules for the board meetings are pretty simple. Only one person speaks at a time, and I decide who that will be. We deal with only one issue at a time. Any board member who wants to speak on an issue will be given the chance. Decisions require a motion, second, and vote. Once the vote is taken, all discussion of the issue stops. We don't want to keep rehashing the same things over and over. What about the agenda? Well, that's my responsibility also. I touch base with the board members, committee chairs, and the manager to see what's ready to be dealt with, and then draft the agenda. You'll note a few things about the agenda. First, I put times on it. You'd be surprised how much that helped keep people on track. They actually try and keep within the times allotted. Next, I've told the board and emphasized it that I expect them to read the attachments before they come to the meeting. All I want to hear at the meeting are questions about the reports and motions to vote on. If you have a question about something that you read in the reports, you might want to call the person who's submitting the report before the meeting so that they can have the time to get an answer. This helps keep items from being tabled while we wait for some information. He means it too. He keeps to the agenda, doesn't let us wander off. We used to talk about all sorts of things, but we'd be here for three hours. But now, I get home for dinner. Here's the tip. If you raise a new item during the board meeting, don't leave it hanging in the air. Propose a solution at the same time. If you don't, the discussion may run in circles because everyone feels like they have to contribute something, whether it's pertinent or not. It's human nature to comment. Let's get back to our meeting. I move we accept the minutes of the last board meeting. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the minutes of the last board meeting. Any discussion? Yeah. Who took these minutes? Listen to this. The board met on Thursday. The minutes were approved. The president reported on the change to the clubhouse rules. The financial report was read. Management report was read. The painting contract was approved. Meeting was adjourned. What idiot took these now, minutes? That's out of order, Lee. You know we don't allow personal comment. John took the minutes because Bill, our secretary, was out sick and still is. I guess I didn't give John very good guidelines. It's my my fault. So let's just reconstruct the minutes, shall we? Let's get at it. The minutes are the legal corporate record of the association. At a minimum, they should contain minutes of the meeting of the Woods Association, date and place of the meeting, location and time of the meeting, names of the persons present in an official capacity, any resolutions voted on with exact language, Remarks and comments do not have to be included. Date of the next meeting. The signature of the secretary. Never publish the minutes of a meeting until they've been approved. I think they have them fixed now. All right, it's been moved and seconded that the minutes of our last meeting, as amended, be approved. All in favor, say aye. 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 The motion is adopted. The business meeting should be moved along. That's my job. Reports should be summarized with only the important items or issues requiring a vote raised at the meeting. If the discussion drags or wanders off the subject, I need to move it back to the agenda. Most board meetings should be finished in 45 to 90 minutes. Budget meetings or other meetings with special problems to consider will take a little longer. Now, we didn't start off this way. My first board meeting went three hours, but we've worked on it, shaving a few minutes at a time off each meeting. When are you guys going to take care of that pothole in front of my place? It's been there forever. Excuse me, but we can't field questions or comments during the meeting. I've seen the pothole, and I understand your problem. If you wait a few minutes, I'll be happy to talk to you after the business portion of the meeting is over. 
When an owner interrupts you, don't get into an argument. Acknowledge the issue or concern, restate the meeting ground rules, but establish a process that will deal with the problem. In other words, diffuse the anger, propose a strategy, and get back to your meeting. Don't get into a debate or argument. I move we accept the bid of Acme Pool Services in the amount of $8,000 for the purpose of resurfacing the pool. I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that Acme Pool be awarded the contract for resurfacing the pool in the amount of $8,000. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. No. The chair votes no, and the motion is lost. It's sometimes thought that the chair or president does not vote or only votes to break a tie. This is because the chair should not overly influence the vote of the members. In Robert's rules, the chair is allowed to vote under certain circumstances. The chair does not join in a voice vote or in a standing or show of hands vote on the first count. The chair does vote when the vote is by written ballot. The chair may vote when that vote will break a tie or in our case, create a tie and defeat the motion. The chair is not obligated to cast the vote that would affect the result. All right, the next item of business is consideration of the purchase of new directional signs at the entrance. Well, I move that we accept the quote from Star Sign Company in the amount of $1,200 for the purchase and the installation of nine new signs. Second. Any discussion? I just found out that there may be some problems with the locations we chose earlier. I move that we table the motion until our next meeting so we can clear this up. That motion's out of order. You see, you need to move that we postpone consideration of the motion until the next meeting. If you table it, it's supposed to be brought back up at this meeting. Okay. I move that we postpone consideration of the motion until our next board meeting. All right. Here are the important points for you to remember. The time, location, and physical arrangements of the board meeting have a direct impact on the success of the meeting. The agenda and necessary reports must be in the board's hands far enough in advance of the meeting to allow them time to read them. An opportunity for the owners to talk to the board should be available, but not during the actual board meeting. Make sure everyone understands the ground rules. Have an agenda and stick to it. It is up to the president to control the meeting. Keep calm, be fair, and make sure that everyone who wishes to have a say has the opportunity. The other type of meeting is the general membership meeting. Most associations have only one of these a year, the annual meeting at which directors are elected. But you may find yourself holding more than one for other purposes. Your documents will outline when a general meeting is required. We will now come to order. The meeting will now come to order. Order in this room. Order. The meeting will now come to order. If you feel that you might need one of these to keep order, then you need to start planning your meeting early. Let's start with the basic mechanics. Your documents will spell out when the annual meeting is to be held and when you'll need to call other general membership meetings. The documents will tell you how and when the notice for the meeting will be handled and possibly even the agenda for the meeting. Pay very close attention to the requirements. Screw something up like sending the notice out late and you could invalidate the actions taken at the meeting. If your documents say they must be sent out at least 30 days prior to the meeting, they mean at least 30 days. I'm going to go out into the audience and see if I can't give the board a few problems. If you have a problem meeting the requirements of the documents, don't just ignore them. You may find that amending your documents will make the situation easier. Talk to your attorney for help with that. The next issue to deal with in planning is the where and when. If you don't have a clubhouse or if your clubhouse is too small to hold the expected number of people, use the best alternative you can. A school, civic center, library, or just outside in a common area. A member of the associations have combined their meetings with a social event, like a barbecue, to encourage people to come. Be creative. One of the associations that used a barbecue had failed twice earlier to get a quorum. 
with the social event, they had a 95% turnout. A side benefit, with smell of good food wafting over the audience, the annual meeting took only 15 minutes. Pay attention to the size of the meeting area. If you plan on having 50 people at your meeting and the room holds 300, even if everybody shows up, it will look like a small turnout and a less than successful meeting. Like board meetings, a general meeting should be held on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday and should start at 7 or 7.30 in the evening after people have had dinner but before they settle in for primetime TV. If this is a special meeting called to deal with a specific issue, the agenda should reflect that. And the only item of business conducted at that meeting should be the item under consideration. The board should sit up front, but not way up high on a stage. There should be a podium, because the presiding officer should stand, and a sound system to make sure that my voice gets heard above all others. One thing, always start on time. If you start meetings late, people will start coming later and later. Please be seated. The meeting will come to order. There is a quorum present. I'd like to introduce the people sitting at the head table. While Tony introduces the people seated at the head table, let me make a few points. If you think you're going to be facing a contentious meeting, and if you're not real comfortable with parliamentary procedures, consider hiring a parliamentarian to help you. At the end of the tape, there will be further information about where you can find them. You may want to have a practice meeting with a parliamentarian and the board so that you plan for possible situations. It may be useful for the presiding officer to have a script to work from during the meeting. It could make him or her more comfortable. Everyone entering the meeting received a package containing the agenda, the ground rules, and the items to be considered at the meeting. Information relevant to these items was also included. This gives the members the facts they need to make a good decision. Following our bylaws, we'll be using Robert's rules of order to conduct this meeting. As the presiding officer, I'll be conducting the meeting and will follow the agenda, which you have in your package. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions of the officers that are giving reports while a motion is on the floor and during new business. If you wish to take part in the discussion, please stand after the person who's talking has finished, and I'll recognize you. Only one person at a time will be allowed to speak. Please keep your discussion to the item being considered. We will allow no personal or derogatory comments. Since we expect a number of comments tonight, we're asking you to keep your statements to three minutes or less. When everyone's had a chance to speak, I will return to those who wish to speak more. All discussions should be directed to the chair. Any decision will require a motion, second, and a vote. Once the vote is taken, all discussion of that issue will stop. Okay, the first order of business is the reading of the minutes from our last meeting. These are the minutes from our last annual meeting. While they're reading the minutes of the last meeting, let's talk for a minute about quorums. If a quorum were not reached, then the only business that could be conducted would be to recess, to adjourn, to fix the time to adjourn, to take measures to obtain a quorum. The motion to approve the minutes as read is adopted. We will now hear the reports of the officers, starting with the treasurer's report. Please take a look in your package, and that's a financial report. May I have a motion to adopt the report of the auditor? I move that the report of the auditor be approved. I second it. All right. It's been moved and seconded that the report of the auditor be approved. Is there any discussion? As a side note, the report of the treasurer at board or annual meetings is not adopted or approved. If there were mistakes or calculation errors, they would also have been approved. The audited statement of the financial records is what you would adopt. Are we going to be here all night? Let's get to the election so we can get you guys off the board. Your comments are out of order. The motion on the floor concerns the report of the auditor. Do you wish to speak to that issue? No. I want to get you crooks off the board so we can stop spending so much money. The members' remarks are again out of order. Please be seated. Let's take a break from the meeting for a minute and talk about how to deal with someone who's upset. 
As the presiding officer, there are a number of things you should do. Get to know Robert's rules and use them fairly. Announce the ground rules at the beginning of the meeting. Retain the services of a parliamentarian. Have the board and the others who will be at the head table meet early to practice how to run the meeting. Always remain calm. Keep your voice at a moderate level. Don't drone, but don't raise it either. Acknowledge the emotions of the angry person without conceding the problem. For example, I understand that you're angry about this situation. Here's what we're going to do about it. And then deal with it at the appropriate time. Never allow personal or verbal abuse. Refer any threats of litigation immediately to the association's attorney who should be at the meeting. When someone threatens to sue, stop your end of the conversation immediately. There's not much you can do to enforce the rules if a person is determined to be disruptive. You can't physically remove them. You could end up being sued. You can ask them to leave, but your action could be construed as a disenfranchisement of their voting rights. If you even remotely suspect that there's a possibility of physical violence, consider hiring an off-duty police officer to be sergeant-at-arms during the meeting. Don't expect or allow a resident to use force on another owner. If you've acted calmly and rationally, usually the other owners will soon tire of the disruptions caused by a few. Also, the vice president and I took a class in parliamentary procedure at our local community college. I feel a lot more comfortable up here now that I'm familiar with the way it works. Nobody intimidates me, and I can really keep the meeting moving along. Point of order. Yes? I still haven't gotten answers to the question about the repairs to my unit. You're out of order. Point of order can only be raised when you know that there's been a violation of the rules, bylaws, or laws. You shouldn't use it to disrupt the meeting or to bring up something that's not under discussion. You'll be given a chance to talk. Sure. You guys say go ahead and talk, but you guys never listen. Most people really don't understand the rather complicated Roberts rules. But if the president takes a few moments to explain how the meeting will be run and uses the rules fairly, they should actually help in moving the meeting along. Is there any other new business to bring before the membership? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn is in order. I move to adjourn. I second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. A well-planned meeting will allow the association to conduct its business with a minimum of fuss and distraction. It will reduce the amount of time the association business takes from your personal life, and that's something all board members will appreciate. There are a number of publications available to help you with the meetings process. The Guide for Presiding Officers and the Basic Parliamentary Procedure Workbook by Joyce L. Stevens are excellent resources. We hope this tape will help you to hold more effective meetings. The Community Associations Institute GAP reports on the role of the association president and the guide to annual meetings, special meetings, and elections are also good to have in your association's library.